Hi folks, this is Dakota Cohen here from Cohen Farm. In this video, I wanted to show you guys a drone tour of our entire 250 acre farm that's located here in central Alberta, Canada. As many of you are aware, industrial agriculture is currently destroying the environment, but it's also destroying our health in that the, the food that it's producing is just awful. So the, the irony in this whole situation is that we're literally eating ourselves and our planet to death. My parents had this insight more than 30 years ago, and since that time on our farm, it's been our mission to provide the most nutrient-dense food, permaculture education, and an empowered community to try to regenerate the planet and its people. In this tour, I'm gonna to show you what it looks like after 30 years. So the first thing you'll probably notice is all of the trees that are on our property. For, for the last 30 years, we've been planting thousands of trees every single year. This placement of these trees were designed to help slow the wind down, capture snow, and provide food and habitat for not only our animals, but a variety of wildlife as well. Here you can see our Jersey milk cows and our Berkshire pigs out grazing on fresh spring grass. The paddock that they're in right now is just one of many spokes that's part of a hub and spoke design that's part of our integrated livestock system on the farm. So here you can see our straw bale house with all of our kitchen gardens, our hay sheds, our kraals, some of our aquaculture systems. Now we're coming up on our water harvesting system on the farm. Those, those, those curvy lines you see are, are swales with tree systems planted along, along them. So the bottom one on the screen is a 600 meter long swale that we just planted this spring. And as we come through the, the alley cropping system between them where there's, there's pastures, we're coming up on a, a six acre forest garden that has five different rows that was planted back in 2014 with over 30 different species. And that the curvy line at the top of the screen, that's our top swale. It's, it's about 400 meters long and it connects in with the highest dam on our property that we actually pump water to with the solar water pumping system and gravity feed with the rest of the farm. The middle swale that you can see stretches from right across our entire property and it's over a kilometer and a half long. As I mentioned, those alleys that you're looking at, those are designed to mimic our Climax ecosystem here on the farm, which is an aspen parkland biome, which is characterized by groves of trees interspersed with grassland. So that's what our farm wants to be. If we did nothing else, we just walked away, that's what our land would become. And so we realized that if that's what our land wants to be, why are we fighting that? Why don't we just try to design an agricultural system that fits within that pattern? So this is the top dam that we're coming up to on the property here. It's over 30,000 gallons and it's integrated in with a, with a 400 meter swale that not only allows us to, to fill the dam with the swale, but there's a culvert that runs through that dam wall that allows us to flood irrigate that entire swale to help establish tree systems high on the property so we can capture as much snow so we can start fixing the water cycle on our farm. Now you can see Red Deer Lake in the background as well as a lot of the wetlands, riparian areas and native forests that we fenced off to help pre preserve biodiversity on our farm. As we're coming up to our herd of grass-fed beef here, you can see there's a, an access way that follows a fence line. And along all the access ways on our farm, there's a series of water lines that carry water from that top dam we were just looking at to water taps that are located every few hundred meters on the farm. Those water taps allow us to provide clean drinking water to our cattle across our entire farm so we can do a really good job of rotational grazing. We rotate our beef cows at least once a day and that gravity water system allows us to do that efficiently and effectively. This practice of intensive grazing has greatly increased the soil health on our farm, overall carrying capacity of our land. Another design pattern that allows for easy rotational grazing is the fact that the three swales on our farm are all bordered by permanent electric fences. And because the grazing alley width between these swales is all less than 150 meters or about 450 feet, it works really well with standard geared reels and step-in posts. All the water harvesting swales on the property have spillways that direct spring runoff from snow melt into this one million gallon dugout. That dugout in turn spills out into a series of four acre wetlands that we're trying to re-establish in the farm. All these water harvesting earthworks capture more than 10 million gallons of water every spring runoff, which is the equivalent of 40 years worth of water based on our current water usage. This is one of the crop fields in the farm where we grow our feed for our chickens and pigs. This particular crop has over 15 different species of annual grains, pulses, clovers, and other cover crop species. These constructed wetlands you're looking at now have already infiltrated a majority of the water they infiltrated from the spring runoff. These wetlands are helping to recharge our water tables, 
So much so that some of our next door neighbors have reported an increased production in their wells. But recharging aquifers isn't the only function these wetlands are playing on our farm. Right now our pigs and our dairy cows are grazing together in the same paddock. After the first week of July, when they're taking off this particular spoke in the hub and spoke grazing system, the pigs will go to actually graze in those constructed wetlands on a particular crop called Typha latifolia, or, or cattail. Now these cattails are one of the world's most productive carbohydrate crop on the planet. They can produce more than 30,000 pounds of carbohydrates per acre. And when compared to things like rice, barley, and potatoes, they beat those crops on every nutrient metric you compare them to. And the best part is, cattails are perennial, so they only need to be seeded once as long as they're managed properly. Come July, the wetlands will have dried up and the cattails will be ready for harvesting. And all we have to do is move the pigs from one spoke into the other. The central design feature of the sub and spoke integrated livestock system is that the pigs, chickens and cows can all let out into a variety of forage resources, but they all have to come back to a central hub for any management needs that they need from us, whether that's food, water or milking. So I hope you enjoyed this tour of our farm and some of the work that we've been doing over the past 30 years. If you have any questions or suggestions about future videos you'd like to see, please leave those in the comment section below. Education is a huge part of our mission to regenerate the health of the planet and our people. And if there's anything we can do to help you on your journey to do the same, please let us know. If there's one thing my family's learned over the past three decades during our transition away from the industrial agricultural paradigm is that humans have just as much potential to be positive as we are negative. All we need to do is start eating the change we want to see in the world.